Um, so I'm Richard Margolin. I'm the CTO and one of the co-founders of RoboKind. Um, we build facially expressive and socially interactive robots, um, and we use them primarily right now for autism therapy with kids. Um, so uh, we've got a uh, we've got a great experienced team. I have a heavy robotics background. Um, we've got uh, our other uh, founder and CEO um, came, has done a ton of startups, has uh, even uh, led exits, including IPOs and big corporate buyouts. And then everyone else on our team is really just top notch and excellent. So, uh, my father actually. Um, so. Uh, so um, basically, autism is a, a huge issue in schools. It's a growing, it's a real big growing thing. Um, the problem in, uh, with autism is kids can't communicate socially. They also can't recognize social cues. And so traditional therapy, where you pair them with a therapist or a teacher um, to try and teach them a lot of the elements of uh, social interaction is really difficult because it's still a person and they have trouble interacting with people. Um, so children need a lot of repetition. People don't like doing that. Highly trained professionals are very expensive when you're paying them a couple hundred dollars an hour in some cases. Uh, to give that repetition, so it's expensive. And in uh, public schools especially, there's not a lot of standards around the country for how these kids are helped and educated. Um, and then part of the problem with that is there's no real data to help these schools um, really focus and do things better. Autism in the U.S. is a huge thing. It, right now, the U.S. is spending $126 billion a year, and a UC Davis study just uh, said that in the next decade, that's going to somewhere between half a trillion and a trillion a year. So it's giant. Um, so our robot, uh, Milo, is extremely effective when it comes to helping kids with autism. Um, as I said before, these kids have trouble interacting with their therapists and their teachers. So um, studies show that these kids engage with uh, their traditional, have in a traditional therapy uh, setting about two and a half to three percent of any given session. So in an hour, that's only about a minute thirty. Uh, it's nothing, and it's not all at once, so it's really hard to teach anyone anything if you just have them for a couple seconds here and there. With our robots, they engage almost 53 minutes of every hour. It's incredible. So you can do a huge amount. You have the opportunity to actually teach them. Um, and then from a cost standpoint, uh, we're, se we're selling to school districts. Those are our customers right now. And um, we're only charging 5000 a year per classroom, not per student. Uh, right now, a lot of these schools are spending anywhere between twenty and 25000 a year on average per student with autism. So we can really help them add a lot for very minimal cost and really save them a lot of money long term. Um, so this is kind of the setup, uh, what you'll see when the robot's interacting with the student. The teacher gets it started and then uh, can really walk away. The robot actually leads um, a session and a kid interacts with the robot um, via a tablet. And the robot also uh, shows the kid videos of kids interacting with each other, which we filmed a ton of. Uh, and we've got about 120 lessons right now. So we have a lot of content um, and it's all expert created. We're not like just trying to take a shot in the dark with it. This is all based on best practices, but tailored uh, to our robot. Um, so like I said, we're creating data and there's not a lot of data out there. And so that helps parents see that their kids are actually getting effective help. It um, helps uh, schools show that what they're doing is effective because a lot of parents in different areas have started suing schools to provide better levels of care. So it uh, you know, kind of lets them cover their asses. Um, but we're also doing something that really works. So it doesn't, you know, they can cover their asses all they want. We're really helping. Um, so basically, like I said, it's 5,000 a year per classroom. Uh, that puts us around an 80% gross margin, which is pretty awesome. Uh, it's an annual contract. You get the robot, the curriculum, everything. Um, and so schools are loving it so far. Uh, we started uh, selling this year. Um, we really started delivering in August around the beginning of the school year. Uh, we've delivered uh, 170 uh, robots to date. Uh, I submitted that slide yesterday, so it's a little out of date. Um, and we're getting awesome feedback, uh, just tremendous feedback. We're only selling in Texas, and we just started in California, so those numbers are pretty small. We really want to get into um, 
every other state, but at least the big ones uh, educationally. So, yep. Uh, so, questions? Uh, and where are you yeah. based? Uh, we're four blocks from here. We're actually, you're in our building now. I just learned yesterday. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm 10 floors below you. That's where I'm based. 10 floors so, below. Yes. Ah, all right, let's <laughs> go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sounds like you're with geriatrics and people have Alzheimer's. Uh, yeah, so we're working with some content partners to base and activity directors to help us create some of that and have started doing a little testing. Our, our real focus right now is autism, but we're wanting to work with partners in other industries to help us create uh, other markets, basically. Uh, yes? So you've shown that they do engage more with the robots, but has, do you have any data to show that they do then transfer that to human interaction and it does actually improve their social situation? Yeah, we do actually. So um, right now, uh, that's kind of in a pre-published paper state. So there's uh, some results, the paper, the study on that, which is in, huh? Oh, um, these kids transfer really, I mean, incredibly quickly. We've had kids who have been in therapy for a decade and still were basically nonverbal, never made eye contact and didn't speak to anyone, go home and say hi to their parents for the first time after two sessions with a robot. <laughs> Sure. I didn't tonight, but um, if you if you follow up with me, like I said, we're real close, and uh, we can, you can come by our office and see it. Yes, sir. So how tall is it? Um, the robot's about two feet tall. So a kid sits on a desk, or the robot sits on a desk with the kid in front of them, um, and interacts that way. Um, so. Yeah. Yes. What about other languages? Um, we can do basically. Uh, up to about 30 languages as far as our voice provider goes wow. and can just, we just need help to get into other languages in other countries with just, you know, content translation and real cultural translation so it's not a bad dub like a kung fu movie. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. Um, Right now, we're primarily selling to schools. We're running a small beta with uh, home users and also with uh, private therapists who are uh, using it to bring around individual clients. Um, so right now, s schools mostly, but eventually, as the product gets a little stronger, uh, we may change a pricing model to more of a monthly payment for parents. Um, yeah. Yes, sir. David. So versus your competition, there were some other things you showed me, and so comparing your product to your competition. Um, yeah, so competition-wise, there's not like a ton, but uh, there are other robots that you'll see a lot of autism research, but it's all research. There's no real curriculum and formal product. Those robots tend to be in the uh, 16 to like $40,000 range, and then you've got to develop your own therapy with them. And then at the low end, there's books that are a couple hundred dollars, but you know, it's, there's nothing like this that's kind of this whole, because a lot of the other robots have really been built exclusively by engineers who have good concepts, but haven't really put a full product together. Oh, yeah. I mean, so as far as the data collection goes, I kind of briefly mentioned it. I mean, we're measuring all kinds of things that you traditionally could only do in a lab. Uh, facial expression analysis, eye contact, time to answer. Um, we're really kind of seeing how these kids interact. And so over time, we're going to be able to really improve this stuff uh, with all the data we're collecting. Yes. Um, I, right now, um, I mean, if, if we can monetize it, we probably will look at doing that. Um, but in some cases, uh, with some of the stuff we're learning right now, because autism is kind of the Wild West uh, right now, we really want to kind of use that data ourselves and then publish it so that all the things people are doing are more effective. Because there's really just tiny nothing data sets right now. And we already have one of the largest data sets ever created on autism. Yeah. Uh, Is there anything, uh, in, have you researched anything with uh, changing the gender or race? Or? 
Um, yeah, so um, as far as uh, those things go, right now we're just in early manufacturing. The race is easy because I can change the color in the plastics like tomorrow. Uh, gender would be a new character face. It's again pretty easy. Um, I, I actually just uh, built my first female head. Uh, it's sitting in the office right now. It hasn't been put on a body. Weird thing to say, but that's my life. Um, so, uh, yeah, we can do that easily, uh, and we will. Oh, like uh, more in common with, yeah. Uh, I don't know, uh, actually. So, thank you. Amazing, man. Thank you so much.